Good morning. This is the officially going to be the last time I leave Vegas for this year. I think I've had many, many flights in the whole entire course of 2023, but I am officially closing out my poker chapter. I just spent like three weeks here in Vegas. Not great weeks to be fair with you in Vegas here, but I got my bag packed, traveling light with just a backpack, going back to Boston where I'm from. Uh, spend time with uh, family, friends, holidays, New Year's, all the fun stuff for a couple days. Um, so it take some time off, but I wanted to make this vlog, make it me, make it a little more personal, maybe a different kind of format where you kind of get a little behind the scenes of what's happening. So I'm gonna fly back today. It's currently 8 a.m. It's late or early. See, I'm delusional because I don't go to sleep very early. But yeah, going back home. I'm waiting for my Uber right now, and we've got some stuff to go through because I am officially closing out the chapter of 2023 of poker and boy it was one to forget i think <laughs> but i'm uh, gonna wait for the uber driver and uh you know got some time to kill oh my god i pulled it i hate this putter god we only show the makes here hello you got no suitcase nothing in the back no. good All right, made it to the airport. I don't know how much you guys care about the little travel vlog and stuff that I'm trying to put together in this video, but let's get to business. We got some numbers to take care of, and I found a corner of the <laughs> airport to sit at right now. This is my current view. So hopefully no one is too close to hear these numbers because they're not great. So um, uh, first things first, I am not gonna go over the cash game results that I had this year. Mainly because I literally didn't play much cash this year at all. I think I played maybe 30 times in the past year, which is not a lot of volume. And I dictated my entire uh, poker year based on my tournament results because I played a lot more volume. I spent all my time traveling for tournaments. I spent lots of hours sitting down at tournaments and playing. And that's where I prided myself on the results. I just really wanted to win in tournaments. I, want, I focused and dedicated a little year to play that format. So uh, the cash game stuff, I don't really feel like going over because it doesn't really represent how my poker year went. Also, there are websites and uh, stuff that track the results of all my cash games because I mainly only played on live stream, mainly at Hustler basically, as like 95% of all my cash game sessions. So if you want to look that up, then it's also all available in public uh, online. And secondly, I've also uploaded all my cash game results. So every single cash game that I've played, I have recorded. So for that reason, so for that reason, I am not going to talk about it. But if you want to go back to all my videos from this year and tally up how the cash games went, then you will find out. Um, so the only sort of information that's missing with the cash games with the online stuff is that I sold some action when I played Hustler, for example, the million dollar game, I won like 592, and I had like 22% of myself. So, roughly, that's what's going on. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the cash games. I'm done talking about it. Let's go to tournaments and see the bloody reveal. The bloody reveal that tournament is this year, overall profit loss of $435,676. Played 650 hours. This is, this is all live tournaments, by the way. Uh, the, the app I'm using right now is called Poker Income. People ask all the time. There's some good things about it and bad things about it, and I'm gonna go over a more in-depth analysis of these numbers, but uh, from a very surface level point of view, I lost over 400,000 in tournaments. I fired 233 bullets, and I cashed 28 times. Uh, this ROI number is why I don't like it. Uh, this captures like total ROI, not average ROI, which is important in tournament land. And I had 1.2 million in buy-ins, and I cashed for just over 800,000. So that's where the losses are. Lots of volume in the tournaments. You can go over location. Playground was literally the only place I won, and WPT Australia because I, those are the only two tournaments I won. I only won two tournaments this year, and they were uh, small. Bicycle, I played one $400 tournament, and WCP Horseshoe. Freaking WSOP, I always don't do well in the summers. Uh, lost 125,000 this summer. And then the win I just spent, uh, 
three weeks here in Vegas to play at the win, and I lost 90k this year at the win, and I lost everywhere else because that's how tournaments go. You have to win a tournament in order to be profitable uh, by game. Most profitable is PLO Pot Limit Omaha. Jesus Christ. And then we go by monthly. Not many profitable months. So this is like a in capturing very surface level overview of my tournaments. And I'm gonna go over to the spreadsheets now where I actually tracked everything. I tracked the online stuff first. I also tracked live stuff in a more in-depth view. Um, so mainly because I wanted to track, uh, there's sometimes where I sell action and sell that markup. And I also wanted to check my FTs, how many FTs I've made. So now you know the number. The thing about tournaments is that there's like just so much variance that comes to it and I wanted to track everything. So I'm gonna go over the online stuff first. You just got like a little taste of what the live results are. It's not great. Online results aren't super great either to be honest. Uh, but this doesn't capture all the online stuff. I started randomly tracking the uh, online results like middle of the year. But I ended up firing like 700 bullets that I have uh, that I have tracked. So this is everything from buy-in level, uh, tournaments cashed, FTs, results, my net ROI per tournament, and it ends up being this lovely number where I have cashed in, uh, I fired 773 bullets online. And it's not correct, that's only about half of the year, so I fired probably 1,500 online bullets. I've cashed 109 out of those 700 that I captured, and my cash percentage is 14%. In the money percentage, it seems fine. I made 45 FTs, and I bought in for over 300, cashed for just under 400, which means I won money, but that doesn't really capture like everything because my average ROI you can see is minus 6%, which means I uh, ran really good in the big tournaments and then ended up overall losing a bunch in the small tournaments. And to be fair, this is kind of the case because I think like 86k of these 375 number, so almost a fourth of the results, total result came from one buy-in, which was I think a 5k on WSOP. Uh, that was the final table that I made during the summer, but it was a WSOP.com result. Anyways, that, those are the tournament results. Uh, the main number I really care about is this average ROI number that kind of dictates like if I were to My buy it. Please. Please. Basically, average ROI is if I were to buy in to every single tournament that was the same buy in level, that's how much it would be. Like, in theory, let's say everything was a $1,000 online buy in, then I would have lost 6% overall if everything was equal. But sadly, that is not the case. Uh, I, have, I have lost money in average ROI through 700 bullets. What I've learned is that 700 bullets isn't the biggest sample size. Uh, you need to play a lot of tournaments to like understand your true ROI. But we're gonna go over the live results and we're gonna go over this whole freaking year together because I have tracked every single every single tournament and it started with January. First tournament was January 9th at Aria playing the Poker Go stuff. Went to Bahamas, went to Paris, went back to Wynn, went to Vegas, went to Florida in April, then WSOP started in June, yeah, June. Vegas, grind, shit show, <laughs> tournament, I was really over it. And then uh, went to Barcelona, WTBT Australia, went to Montreal Playground, went to Resort for NAPT, went back to Florida for Hollywood, and then ended the whole year at the win. That is a very quick summary of my tournament year. And I uh, talked about, and I kind of have all like the percentages of sold at tournaments and I don't really sell a whole lot. I started selling like very small pieces like 10% for funsies and uh, everything ends up being here. These are the numbers that I really care about. Uh, 229 bullets, a little bit different from the other one. I think I missed one or two or a couple but I ended up FTing. I don't know why this is in percentage. I FT'd seven. I need to remove this percentage. I FT'd seven of the 28 caches which is actually pretty good. <laughs> Uh, all things considered. I don't have many opportunities, but I try to make the most of the opportunities. So I was in the money 12% of the time. My buy-ins were 1.2 million, cashed out for 800K. Average My ROI. Fuck, shut up. Uh, average ROI here, I don't know why it's in dollars. 
I don't know how to change it on my phone, but it's 10% throughout everything, so technically, unlike online, I actually technically won money, so it's like completely opposite, whatever. Basically it means I did really well in the big stuff. Uh, basically it means I did really well in the small stuff, not in the big stuff. My average ABI, average buy-in, is uh, a little over 5K. And my personal results is minus $300,000, even though this is the net of all my tournaments because I sold action and I mainly sold action to the bigger buy-ins and I lost all the bigger buy-ins this year sadly. Uh, my personal result in tournaments, in live tournaments, is minus 356,000, 58,000. Not a good fun number. And to go a little bit more into detail, one last thing that I care about because this is what I spent a lot of my time doing, I wanted to break down my results for buy-in levels. So I did like smaller stakes from zero to $2,500 buy-ins, uh, mid stakes up to 2,500 to 10 Ks, and then higher stakes 10 Ks plus. And these are the numbers how I broke down out of the 229 bullets, 230 bullets. Half of them were from smaller stakes tournaments where I FT'd or in the money in 11 of them, and I FT'd three of them, and I won two of them. The only two tournaments I won were the smaller buy-ins, unfortunately. Uh, the, the playground score was for, for like 86k, 85k, and then the WPT Australia was for also 85, maybe 100 US. And uh, they're nice to win, but it doesn't really add up when you, I fired 60 plus 10k bullets, and I have lost lots of money here. So I lost like 400k just in 10Ks, which is gonna happen because the binds are so much bigger, and I fired a good amount of 25s and 10s, and then the mid-stake stuff lost about 127,000. Just didn't win much outside of the 1Ks, which is a little frustrating to be honest. It kind of makes me feel annoyed whenever I talk about my tournament year because I fire pretty big, and I appreciate all the people that I've seen in person that like congratulate me and stuff, like when you guys watch the videos. When I, when I won the WPT Australia video, a lot of people were like, congratulations on the Sun Run, this and that. And it's just like, it's nice to win the $1,600 buy-ins for 86K, you know, it's a good little rake back, it seems like. But when I fire like four bullets, like one of my last videos was, I fired four bullets in a 25K in Florida. That is my entire score just wiped out and gone in terms of buy-ins. So, a little salty, but I don't know if salty is the right word, but just not super thrilled with the results, but that's how tournaments go from time to time. So those are the results. That's my year in tournaments. Hopefully next year is much better than this one. Made it. Time to go to Boston and wrap up my closing thoughts on the last year of 2023 and maybe some plans for next year or this year that you're watching the video 2024. I have one superpower that I guess I feel like I wanted to share. If there's ever one thing that I'm really, really good at, it's being able to sleep on most surfaces. Any plane, any train, car, wherever the hell I fall asleep. And it's usually worked out, besides when you have a middle of the day flight, like today, it's currently like 6 p.m. in Boston right now, and I just had a five hour sleep. That, I'll be honest, not what you wanna do. But I'm back in Boston, minus 350K, whatever that I went over. <laughs> <laughs> the, like a couple hours ago when we last spoke, but here we are fully awake at 6 p.m. <laughs> Let's get in the car. Okay, I'm back home. I'm here in my childhood bedroom uh, in Massachusetts here. And if you recognize the backdrop, like if you followed me from a long time, same kind of setup and backdrop that I had since my videos in 2019, playing one, two, one, three. I wanted to make a little little bow at the end to wrap up this video nice and neatly because uh, this was a, a little bit of a different format of a video where it was more like a lifestyle vlog or I don't know, bringing the camera around and me filming stuff uh, opposed to like going to the card room and you know, shooting stuff like that. So um, yeah, back home, back in Boston, gonna reset for a couple days to end the year and going to start off the year super, super strong here in 2024. So I'm looking forward to everything. But I have a bunch of thoughts, to be honest with you, about how I want to approach next year, how I want to uh, approach the channel and like goals and stuff and intentions with poker. And uh, 
I wish I had like a good idea of like what I wanted to do, my plans moving forward, but to be honest with you, I don't. Uh, one thing I will say about 2023 throughout my entire year, poker journey, life journey and stuff is that everything is super dynamic and you gotta take things with stride. The cool thing about poker is that it really has lots of translations into life. And this past year, you can look at it as a failure, you can look at it as a room and ability to improve on the entire year. And I'm looking at it dual lensed. Uh, one, obviously a little bit disappointed in booking my first losing year as a poker tournament professional, as you, if you wanna say it. That's something that I devote a lot of my time to playing. But I also wanna look at it as an opportunity to learn from lots of different things. And mainly the one thing is just like perspective and outlook on life. For the past five years, I've spent a lot, a lot of time just like playing poker and devoted my entire life to poker, to travel, to, to playing the highest stakes as possible, to keep pushing like whatever my personal boundaries and limits are in terms of cash game stakes or tournament stakes and uh, accomplishments or achievements. And there's a lot more to that actually, <laughs> uh, which is kind of like transitioning to like what I want to do is that there's a lot more to life than poker. And I'm really grateful for all the friends and experiences and trips that I've been on over the past year, the people that I've met, the new friendships that I've built, uh, new hobbies and things that I'm getting into. Like I'm really getting into golf, like super, super hard, super interested in the sport and the hobby and maybe Hopefully down the line, there'll be some uh, golf content here that I'll be experimenting with uh, potentially in 2024. Uh, but mainly about like the friendships and like the experiences I've, I've made with just like a bunch of people within the poker industry, outside the poker industry. And it's nice to have that balance. And it's something that I really haven't done my entire life so far is, is find this balance. But next year, 2024, it's gonna be a really fun year. I'm excited for it, whether it's uh, from a poker's perspective, whether it's from a life perspective, or like traveling and all that other stuff. But one thing's for sure is that I've always wanted to keep the people who support me in touch with what's going on, whether it's within poker, outside of poker. I wanna make content for that because I would never have any of these opportunities without the people watching it. And as long as you guys still care, then I'm happy to make the videos. So I've got a lot of cool opportunities, uh, really big tournaments coming up. I think I'm gonna play my very first uh, overseas super high roller uh, <laughs> tournament series in Korea, potentially. Getting my partnership with WPT Global and being an ambassador there on the online side is also amazing. So I'll have opportunities to stream some bigger tournaments. I think there's actually a big series going on right now, WPT Global Winter Festival. So use the code Rampage, all that stuff. It's nice to have that partnership with them to be able to play on an online platform. I have opportunities, of course, with Hustler. Big thank you to them and Ryan for letting me play. I think I'm gonna be playing a little bit more this year. You know, like last year, this 2023, I played like 30 cash sessions in the entire year, and most of them were Hustler. Maybe I, I, I play a little bit more, increase the volume with, with the cash game side. And maybe I'm gonna play a lot of golf, dedicate my time doing that, and uh, I'll keep you guys in the loop. But hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, happy holiday season. Here's to an incredible 2024, hopefully, hopefully a winning one. And I uh, wish you guys the best of luck on the felt, in life, all that fun stuff. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. You know, let me know what you're excited for, for yourself personally, and what you wanna see from here on this channel because there's a lot of opportunities and avenues that I can go about, and I'm trying to figure out which one is the right one for me. So um, that's it, wanted to end it off here. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for listening to my very, very long rant and following along my very long travel day, but a fun one. So happy to have you guys along. Nice to be making vlogs and doing a different format than the normal ones. And I'll see you guys next time. Here's to 2024, later. The same.